Hello guys, you're welcome back. This is Sammy from jvsco.net. I hope you guys are doing great. Cool. So we are back again to continue working on our project. So in our last section, the last section we did, we've successfully created the controller class for our customer, the REST controller for our customer. So in this section, we are going to dive into creating the service layer. So let's go ahead. Remember last time we created all this method here and the reason why they are red is because we have not created all this method in our service class. And this is exactly what we are here to do right now. So let's go into it. So here I'm going to I'm going to open the service class, the service package. This is our service package services. And here we have the customer service here already, which we created in our last, uh, the last section we did. So I'm going to go back to this controller and the easiest way to do this is just to, uh, I place my, my cursor here and you can see suggestion here, create method, get this in customer service. Cool. So now I'm just going to click on this. So clicking on this, we have this here already. So I'm going to, so this is the method here. So right now, before we continue, we are going to create, um, we are going to create the repository, the DO class, which is the, our repository. So I'm going to create, right click on this main package and I have to, I create a new package. Now this new package is going to be um, repository, repository, repository. So I'm still going to make it repositories because we might have more than one repository in there. So I just make it repositories here. So um, we click enter and I'm going to right click, so we're going to right click on this repository package and create a new um, class. Actually, it's not going to be a class, it's going to be an interface. So we're going to choose here interface and now the name of this interface is going to be uh, customer, customer repository, customer repository. So here, this one is the customer repository and um, we are going to hit enter to finish, hit enter. So here we have gotten our repository and we are going to annotate this with at, uh, sorry, at repository. Yes, at repo, repository. And now we are going to make use of the Spring Data JPA dependency we we included last time in our dependency uh, management in, in our Maven uh, file. So now we are going to extend extend the JPA repo JPA repository. Now you can see that the JPA repository is a uh, is a generic interface. I'm going to expand this. So it's a generic interface. So we are going to specify the class, the classes we need here, the class and the, the class ID here. So here we have the customer class. Here's the customer, the customer class is what we need here. And here we are going to specify the ID. And remember that the ID here is, is of type log. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. And if we do this here like this, it's not going to accept it because this one is a primitive. So it only accepts objects. So let's have, um, make it uh, long here, which is long. So this one, you can see that it's clear. So this is all we have, we have to do here. For now, this is all we have to do here for now. So let's go back to our services. And this repository is going to be a dependency to our customer service class. 
So here I'm going to we're going to do private final um, we're going to call our repository here private final customer customer repository customer customer repository and customer repository and the same way we are going to inject we are going to auto wire this here and we are going to do we are going to create a constructor here by right clicking and click on generate click on constructor and uh, we choose this uh, feed here so we click on ok so here we go so now we have successfully inject this here like I said last time I'm going to explicitly put this here for clarification purpose not put this here so of course it's not needed it's not needed because we just we have just one um, dependency here if we have more than one then this one is compulsory but now we just have one it's not compulsory but I just want to leave it there for some reasons so here we are going to we are going to return returned customer repository dot find all so we are going to find all you see it's straightforward a straightforward method very straightforward so here we are going to go back you can see that this one has turned white because the method is in existence already so we are going to do same to this so this one here we are going to return a customer repository dot dot find by id we are going to get find by id and pass the id here the id here and if you look at this this one here is expecting optional because this method here is optional understand required customer it's required customer sorry it's required us it requires all to return a customer but here we are specifying um, optional because this method here is is an optional method so there's something we can do here to overcome this so we can just uh, use a little bit of java 8 like we can do um, dot dot rs throw so which means if the customer is not found we should throw this so we are going to do this um, uh, this so we're going to throw new new customer new customer customer not found customer not sorry not found customer not found exception customer not found exception and we are going to give uh, a string message here for example the the required the required customer could could not be found could not be found so I'm going to break this down I'm going to break this um, I'm going to break this down break it down from here so I'm going to break this down from here so a little bit clearer okay so we're going to end this here so now we are going to create this exception this exception class so we're going to create this custom exception class to handle this this exception in case the, the customer require the customer we're looking for is not available in the database so it's going to throw this exception so here we're going to let's quickly before we move forward let's just create this create this class where are we going to create it we're not going to put it in the service class so therefore let's make it clear let me cancel let's make it clear so um let me create a new package here called exception new package called exception 
exceptions. I don't know why I'm just pluralizing, but maybe I don't know if this is. Anyways, um, let's put it here. So I'm going to just copy this. I'm going to copy this name. Or better still, we're going to do it. Let's allow the ID to click for us. So click on this red bulb and click on this. Then in here, choose the package we just created. We'll put it in here. So we hit OK. Cool. So now we have created uh we've created this. So we are going to extend the runtime exception. Extend runtime exception. And here we are going to right click and um, and click on this generate and we are going to override a couple of methods here so we we'll override a couple of methods here so we use this one we just need one the string message so we don't need too much we just need this these two the default and this so we're just going to do this so this is the message so this is what we are calling from here right now. This is what we are calling from here right now. You can see the error is gone from here. So in a situation whereby the customer ID provided, the customer could not be found, it's going to throw this error message. So we are done with this and this one has gone white. So let's go to post. The same way, click on this and return just return customer customer repository dot save so here we're going to save we're going to save the customer save the customer yeah save it's finished and the last no this is the last one uh, okay yeah because the reason why the reason why this update actually also gone gone white is because we are using the same method here remember last time the difference between the post and audit is, is, is the put the put and post and also the the, the 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 customer we are updating here has an id and this one has an id so when the application sees that this customer we are editing we are trying to save has an id already existing already so it's going to update it's going to save all the changes made to the body but this one here, there's no ID, it's going to save everything and assign a new ID to this customer. So the last one is the delete operation. Let's go and go the same way and just, uh, just call this guy to delete. Dot delete, just, just, just delete it, delete the customer and pull the ID, the ID. Um, this one here, actually, we're going to use um, delete by ID. We're going to use delete by ID. So, um, this is cool, right? So, you can see how quick is this. The, the, ma the major work we did was in the controller. So, I always I like using this method because it's very easy creating it from the controller down to down to the service so um, <clears throat> here we are done we are pretty done with with I think we are pretty done with this right now we are done with creating the service layer we have created the repository layer and we have created the controller layer so um, okay so we are going to tell before we finish this video we are going to test run this application we're going to make sure everything runs up to this point so let's start let's let's see so I'm going to hit all this run and see what happens so the application has viewed successfully so here application is running still running it's building
of k. So um, our, the application has built successfully. So it means everything went well, went fine. So, so let's try to let's try some methods here. So here we have we have gotten a method to get list of customers from the database. But right now we have not gotten any customers in the database. Let's go to the browser and see what happens. Localhost ATAT API slash customers. Customers. So let's hit enter and see what happens. Oh, cool. So here we have an empty array, which means our API is working fine. But remember right here, we cannot send any post request. We cannot post anything here right now. We can only get things. We can only, um, we can only send a get request to the database right now with the browser. We cannot send post request. But so far, so good. We can see that our application works. So we have the empty array here, which means there is nothing in our database. And we can confirm this by going to our database to check. Let's open our... So we can confirm this by opening our SQL Workbench, my SQL Workbench to see. So this is our table, this is our database. Let's refresh. Let's refresh here, refresh. And uh, so there's the table. Let's try to refresh again. Um, okay. So here we have nothing in here. So our application works correctly by returning empty array. Okay, let's go back to IntelliJ. So we are going to stop. We are going to stop this video here, and in our next video, we are going to start testing with Postman. So far, so good. We are finished creating. We are done with our REST API creation. We have created everything we need to do. So the last part is the testing. So guys, thank you for watching and uh, please don't forget to subscribe, help us grow the channel and uh, so we can grow up together. So let's stop the video here and, uh, and uh, in the next video, we are going to start testing our application with Postman. So stay tuned and stay back. And please don't forget to, please, please don't forget to subscribe if you have not done that. So, um, see you in the next video. Thank you. Goodbye.